Hey folks, welcome to another Q&A on Earth's catastrophe cycle. We only have two things that we're going to be hitting today, one on earthquakes and one on big solar outbursts. So let's uh, just jump right into it. First, we received this comment on YouTube the other day, and I have to imagine that if one person's thinking it, willing to type it out in a comment, maybe there are a couple others who wanted to say it, or at least were thinking it. And the concept is, hey, Ben, you are wrong. It is safer to be underground during an earthquake, safer in, say, a tunnel or something like that than to be on the ground and, uh, you know, up on the surface. And my response to that is, in some modern circumstance, uh, circumstances, that is the case. In others, it's not. And in the event we are discussing, it is not a surface quake. When the crust unlocks, it does so at the low velocity zone, when we have the global earthquake and the planet sort of sways to and fro like a drunkard, the genesis of this earthquake is at the low velocity zone, way down deep below. Every single time one of those happens, it is felt least up at ground level. And so somewhat of a misunderstanding here on the point of this comment, in the event we are talking about and the reason we say most of the deep underground military bases have a very good chance of being crushed um, it's because of where this global earthquake and where the real power of this event is actually having its genesis, which would be the low velocity zone where the crust touches the mantle. The other thing I wanted to mention today is, boy, did we have a great paper in the morning show today. You know, scientists who work for NASA like this can't exactly come out and say, we are screwed. But what they can do is write a paper like this, uh, one that is a literature review. And when you see a major literature review like this, the papers that are highlighted and the concepts that are highlighted really should be bolstered in one's mind. And the other good thing is um, with this kind of uh, a review and these kinds of authors, a lot of people are going to have to pay more attention now. So the main thing that this was confirming was that there is that 3,000 and 6,000 year sunspot uh, cycle of super flares. Every 3,000 years, we get about an X 700. Every 6,000 years, we get about an X 1000. You might recall, we recently saw a paper talking about how on the, millennial, uh, on the millennial scale, the maximum is probably X 70 to X 100. And then about every 150 to 200 years, we get a Carrington-like event, which is probably X30 to X40. This is important because we're going to run a hypothetical here. Let's say there is no magnetic pole shift. I know it is ongoing. The cycle is perfectly timed for it to be happening right now. I know it is accelerating, but just join me here with this hypothetical. Let's say that that wasn't a factor. Let's say that the sun wasn't going to micronova. This event that the sun does every couple thousand years and which we are due for right now sends us back to the Stone Age like that. There will be no circuitry that survives, no copper wires that survive. Um, most vehicles are going to be taken out by something like this, um, if not all. And yeah, okay, two NASA scientists can't exactly write a paper and say we are screwed, but what they can do is do a high level literature review where they highlight something like this, which really should kick it into gear in your minds and also the minds of other researchers that we are on borrowed time as an electrified world, as a technologically dependent species. This is a very real thing. The super flares we see on other sun-like stars have told us this for a long time. And it is a shame that we have gotten up to this point with only a small fraction of the population really appreciating and understanding just what the sun can do. Now, it won't be tomorrow that the world has their wake-up call. It won't be a week from now that the world has their wake-up call. But after this paper, scientists are going to start talking about this a little bit more. And hopefully, we get a little bit of a global awakening before the sun gives us that global awakening uh, or should I say, forces that upon us. Anyway, see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.